Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Having the Conversation. We are having a conversation with millennials about race and sexuality. We have two guest on today for the conversation and I'm going to go ahead and let you ladies introduce yourselves. I'll go first. Um, I'm Isabella Cortez. I'm from Colombia. Uh, mm -hmm. I am part of the Paes ethnic group. Um, I have lived here for um, give or take like seven years like continuing and discontinuing school here and then coming to mm -hmm. university. Um, I graduated in Colombia, and I'm happy to be part of the community over here of um, young artists of color. So. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Amina. I'm originally from Pembroke, North Carolina. I'm Lumpy, and my father is African American. Um, I just finished a master's program at Georgetown in complementary alternative medicine. So, just glad to be part of the conversation today. And. Um, yeah, excited. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for joining in on the conversation. I look forward to having you all back. I want to say that to throw that out there to reel you back in. <laughs> um, today, we're going to focus on um, racism and sexuality in the with today melanated uh, in the melanated community. And so, the first question I want to ask you, ladies, is how do you feel racism has defined your your sexuality on a personal level and then after you all have that conversation if you want to you can got you can go ahead and um and basically go into how you feel it has actually affected your community as a whole in regards to the feminine energy and everything that the women in your community encompass mm -hmm. Um, so for me, well, I started going to school here. I came to the United States in like sixth grade and then I left ninth grade. So I had a very small window, but I wasn't very like sexual. Um, so I, I had more of an experience in Colombia with sexuality. Um, in Colombia, sexuality is a little bit more like prevalent in society because we are open in the way that we relate with one another we love to dance we love to like have physical contact when you go and say goodbye or hello you kiss someone on the cheek you embrace people like even if you just met them you kiss them on the cheek mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more open um and we also talk about sexuality more in like families and when I came back here to do my university, as I really noticed a stark difference. Like very immediately, I felt like I was, I guess, like put into that like pigeonhole of like the young, like super spicy, like fevery Latina that, you know, wants to like, you know, have sex with everybody. Mm. And like, I was really stigmatized with that. And people were really like, giving me that like that image and people would speak about me awfully like they would say like terrible things to me but i in my culture it's like you know we, we're saying hi like we're being we can touch people you know like we'll like touch people on the shoulder when we're talking to them we'll have direct eye contact you know we are friendly by nature and that doesn't necessarily mean that we want to have sex with that person mm -hmm. you know so um I have experienced a lot of problems with that and it has caused like a, a form of depression in me because like I have then become cut off and like I have then become very like close and apprehensive because of that. Um, and it has put it like, it has definitely like put um, kind of like a stamp on my soul. Like it, it, it really is difficult to get out of that stereotype of like the spicy Latina that, you know, wants to just, <laughs> You know do that and mm -hmm. not that oh i'm being friendly like i'm trying to be your friend like you know um so it's it's difficult it was very difficult at first it's like better now but yeah but how do you think that has affected your relationships personal relationships with maybe with having a partner in your life yeah um i've like even with my partner now like i've had a lot of trouble because you know it's like 
in Colombia, it's like you have friends, you have like friends that are males, you have friends that are females, and then you go and like you have fun, and like you like you don't have to go on a date with someone to go and like go for a drink with your friend, right? And so, um, I've had a lot of problems with that because, um, especially with white males, like you know, I've I have, my boyfriend now is white, um, and. The problem is like there's like a cultural divide. There's like mm -hmm. no, no, there's not a lot of understanding there, and like mm -hmm. there's jealousy, which is mm -hmm. understood. It's different culture, mm -hmm. but um, it can be very challenging. Yes, and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. We lost you, Amina. Perspective is very interesting, um, and it's it's funny you mentioned the difference between like Colum Colombia and then coming to the United States because the United States is like really such a re sexually repressed area in my opinion because we don't have conversations mm -hmm. about sex a lot and we don't have conversations like it's very uncomfortable for families especially families of color to have conversations about sex like I remember mm -hmm. coming up um it was just kind of like a taboo subject and then like you know I started to get into high school and it was just I feel awkward talking to my parents about it mm -hmm. um I I didn't I didn't really get into it until I got to college anyway um and it's, it was just a very uncomfortable thing for me to talk about and be open about. And mm -hmm. things have kind of changed now. But then, you know, as I got older, I realized that indigenous women from all around the world and um, African-American women are very sexualized. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of, and for multiple reasons. And you have, you have things like um, on, ha on Halloween, people dress up as sexy Native American women or you know you have the whole thing where people talk about jezebels and you know it's just learning more about those things as i got older just it caused like a a great deal of confusion to me because it's like you sex people sexualize us but then nobody wants to talk about sex mm -hmm. so it's just mm -hmm. it, it's like a big um what's the word i'm looking for i want to say dissonance but it's more like a like a contradiction that's what it is it's a huge contradiction so um I, I still like feel uncomfortable talking to my parents about sex and i'm 24 years old you know <laughs> so it's it's one of those things that I, I worry about that and you know that's I, I really think that's the reason why std rates are so high in the united states and then people um feel bad about having having premarital sex because you know there's a whole religious part of things too where people confine you to i guess you know you have to be in order to be a good christian you can't have premarital sex in this and people do it anyway so i think that causes even more of a conflict in people and mm -hmm. it's, it's i don't know even me saying all of that right now is just like i'm like I'm feeling all kinds of tension in my body, like, oh my God, like, I can't believe I'm talking about this, you know, we're being so mm -hmm. open about it, but it's the truth, and it, it's definitely, I'm glad we're having this conversation, because it needs to be had, especially in mm -hmm. communities of color, and, you know, it's good that, I think, the repression causes a lot of animosity towards the subject in general, mm -hmm. when in reality, you know in other countries like even you're talking about yours like it's it's an open subject and that's you know that comes along with okay i don't have to hide this which takes away so much stress mm -hmm. from especially children in high school age because you know there's this thing called hormones <laughs> you just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean you have you have emotions you have feelings and um even going into college like you know sometimes you just you get wrapped up in it and i don't think people like think about that aspect of it of the fact that we are technically created to reproduce eventually so i don't know it's just... so what role do you why do you so in the so we're talking about melanated women and how mm -hmm. there is this disconnect between the sexualization of who we are as females mm -hmm. but at the same time this repression that goes along with it in our society. Mm -hmm. How has that personally dictated how you navigate out in this world? Okay, so I definitely 
I want to, first of all, uh, I, I'm definitely going to address your question, Alice, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I want to I have a response to what you just mm -hmm. said, Amina, mm -hmm. because you, we have to remember that Christianity, well, religion, was used as a tool of control for colonization of people of color. It was used as a tool. Indigenous peoples who refused to take up that part were burnt at the stake were have they were dismembered it mm -hmm. it was awful if you didn't partake in that then you were gonna die and that was a form of survival and that kind of control is seen very prevalently in the united states because it controls people into not thinking and expressing their sexuality however they want to and having to hide it and having to not express it to the people they love the most you know and i feel like people of color feel a real a real big pressure because they already have pressure of racism. They already have that pressure of standing out and then expressing their sexuality, be it to whatever kind of spectrum that they want to express it in, be even more out there. Like that's, you know, that's, that's scary. You know, you mm -hmm. already are vulnerable. And if you are a gay black man, like that means you are, are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, or or mm -hmm. gay indigenous men in Colombia, like people are mm -hmm. it, that kind of control that was set forth by religion mm -hmm. is still so mm -hmm. strong that people are getting like, they're getting stoned in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, like how I feel, this is how I feel um, because of and, and addressing your talking. question, addressing your question about how I feel that has changed me, sexuality, and how it has. Um, made me react and how I carry myself in society now. Um, I've had multiple people tell me that I use sexuality as a weapon. And why don't you use your mind as a weapon instead? But ain't nobody wanna listen to my mind and my thoughts, right? They wanna, they wanna see me, they wanna see my body, right? Because we gotta remember that one of the top 10 categories in pornography are Latina women. You know, like women of color, like there's still a divide and there's colorism and pornography where there's like there's discrimination against black women, but they're still going to use like lighter skinned black women or Latinas. Right. But they over sexualize us, but they don't want to listen to us. And once we have a voice and once we speak out about a political issue or something, they want to tell us that we have no grounds, that we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. with you on that one um i know for i brought up the costume thing and you know it's just it's ironic because people sexualize us and fetishize us but at the same time they don't want to get in on you know the issues that actually plague our community like the missing and murdered indigenous women movement you know you can't tell me that that's a coincidence that we're so invisible in society that people think it's okay to take our take our religious or not even religious but spiritual garb and sexualize it turn it into something that's that's dirty and demeaning and you can't tell me that there's not a connection to our invisibility versus being able to take those very same garments and turn it into something that's supposed to be funny or sexy you know mm -hmm. and i think that goes along with the idea that we are, they are, people are attempting to erase us. Like we're something that's archaic, that's not even here anymore. So it's okay to dress up as, as us in a costume. And mm -hmm. that's, it's, it's extremely degrading to me as an indigenous woman to see somebody mm -hmm. wearing a headdress and, you know, have, wearing a short skirt and, you know, painting their face, all kinds of random stuff that has no meaning. And mm -hmm. it's very, it's very hurtful. And then especially, I even have kind of a, a love-hate relationship with Pocahontas because, you know, everyone, everyone, or most people like the Disney movie. It's a, it's a great little movie, but then at the same time, it's like, okay, you guys are still fetishizing her kidnapping and her rape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't even feel comfortable with people dressing up as Pocahontas for Halloween, even though that it's like a, a, a distinct character because you're you're making light of someone who was a sex victim. So these things, they, these transgressions. Honey, that's called whitewashing. 
yeah. she was whitewashed. Yep, exactly. So, you know, it's it's very demoralizing mm. to say the least. But in terms of how it's shaped me, um, I still have a great deal of repression, as I mentioned before, and then I I'm very careful about who I'm open with or who I I, ha- I feel like I have to confine myself and I have to be careful who I give my body to because, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time, I just feel like I don't want to be abused in that way. I don't want to be, you know, thrown to the side like a piece of meat, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I also, it's it's just really difficult because at the same time, if we're going to talk about sexuality, we need to talk about how men, even in our own communities, treat us like we're nothing like we're just for that act so i'm i i'm challenging men to think of sex and not just the i'm just gonna you know get off and be done with it type of way but to realize that you are making a, a spiritual connection whether you realize it or not with someone that mm-hmm. you can't just like wash that off as nothing mm-hmm. so and you know so that's that's part of the reason why i'm careful and um it's just, I, I'm still navigating through how to balance being being a brain and being someone who, who is, like, confident in their body and loves their body. And that's mm-hmm. something that's really difficult to do because it seems like you can't be one and the other. You can't be both. And that's what society keeps telling us, that we can't, mm-hmm. we can't be beautiful, we can't be sexy, and we can't have a mind too but but yeah Mm -hmm. it's i was telling my mother the other day i was like you know people can post bikini pictures and get thousands of likes but if i post something about you know someone getting mutilated and raped in my community people are silent no one wants to talk about that part Mm -hmm. so no i hear you i hear you like it's definitely it's definitely difficult because you know for, I feel like for some reason, when a woman of color is sexy and smart and like, you know, just beautiful, it's just like, oh, how did you get there? Or like, you know, you put yourself, did you do that yourself? Like, how, who helped you? What man put you there, you know? And it's like, no, nah, like, <laughs> I gave myself this degree, you know? I debate and I gave myself these ideas. I researched it, you know? Right. And I feel like a, a lot of people will try to discredit women of color and their intelligence. And that's what makes a lot of people angry. Like that's what's made me angry. And I'm trying not to be an angry person, but it, it after a while, it's like, it's just hard not to react. Because people, they're like surprised that I'm so open and so well versed in these issues, you know? They're so, they want to act, they act like, wow, like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> I didn't know you were so articulate. <laughs> what, is that to, what is that supposed to mean? Am I just supposed to be, like, your play thing that walks around in a bikini and doesn't say anything of substance? I, that's, so, yeah, that really makes me angry <laughs> to my core. Like, I don't know. I just, I get tired of seeing the disconnect or, you know, you not looking at me as, like, a whole person. Mm-hmm. You know, I can be I can be smart, I can be athletic, I can be beautiful, I can be all of those things. I don't mm-hmm. have to fit into any type of box. I don't have to fit any type of profile. And that's the issue is that people profile us to just only be for one thing or only mm-hmm. to be one way. When in reality, we we're, we can be, we can walk in between all of those worlds and mm-hmm. we can thrive in all of those worlds. We don't have to choose one. And I think that's important for young indigenous girls or young girls of color to understand mm-hmm. is that you don't have to just be pretty. Mm-hmm. You don't have to just you don't have to just be one thing. You can be whatever you mm-hmm. want to be. Yeah, and that's why I shaved my head in, de- in defiance. <laughs> I, love I it. shaved my head in defiance because because get this like there's so many things that are put pressure upon just the physical. And I've grown tired of it because I am more than this, than this body. I am more than my hair. 
and I am more than what you have projected, your sexuality, your sexualization of nations that have been under colonization. Mm -hmm. I am more than just that. And I am my own person. And this, like being that and like that way, like I want to force people to get to know my mind first. Mm -hmm. So ladies, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna hold men accountable again. <laughs> um, I just, I think that the conversation that men need to be having with each other, the ones that are aware of, you know, mm -hmm. what's in our hearts is they need to talk about how to approach women and how to treat a woman and that their status has nothing to do mm -hmm. about whether, the, whether or not we want to sleep with them or not. Mm -hmm. That's an important conversation that needs to be had. Like, just because you think you have something that I need doesn't mean that that gives you the right to put your hands on me. Mm -mm. That's true. All right, now we get into the hot stuff. All right. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if I missed it when my um laptop decided that she wasn't going to work with me. But <laughs> let's talk about the community. Let's talk about your community. Um, and how the sexualization of your community has been impacted by um, colonialism, by racism. Um, I would love to hear y'all's take on that. And you can take this conversation however you want to. You wanna go first, Amina? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I, I come from two backgrounds, so I, I kind of have a dual perspective on this, but in reality, they're technically the same. Um, but in terms of community, I'm, I'm gonna keep hitting this nail on the head. I think it's an it's a effort that needs to be between both sexes. Um, or, you know, whatever, I know there's a whole lot of things in between too, but the whole spectrum of whatever you identify your sexuality is, it needs to be a conversation between partners and between, you know, whoever you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there needs to be like a clear, a clear discussion about the process of events that lead up to whatever, um, or that lead up to you sharing your body with someone else mm -hmm. or, and not repressing those things anymore like there needs to be i understand the need for a separate conversation between men and women but they need to have conversations together too so they can be on the same page and i think that sorry i'm just i'm trying to make sure that i, I say this correctly but I'm gonna go back to the missing and murdered indigenous women thing because the reality of most of the girls that I'm aware of my community that have been taken and around the country too, is that they, some of them have children, some of them have their relatives to someone. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to remember that at the end of the day, we are human beings. Everyone needs to be treated as a human being. No, no mm -hmm. woman should just be treated as a sex object because we are so much more than that. And I feel like in my community, we've just been reduced to over-sexualized individuals. And I think that we're a target for sex trafficking and outsiders because people look at our communities and they see the state that the U.S. government or, you know, whoever the colonizing force is, they see where they have put us and they see the, they see the poverty. They see us as someone who's not going to be missed. And mm -hmm. we have to change that perspective. We have to show people that we do matter. Mm -hmm. People do have families. And just because we've been oppressed and because we've been pushed off to the side, that at the end of the day, we are still human beings and we still have the same rights as anyone from outside the reservation system or non-reservation system, depending on what your tribal government looks like. You know, we are more than that. And mm -hmm. we, need to, we, need to, we need to stand together as one indigenous nation, 
no matter what your skin color is, black or native, whatever, we need to stand together. We need to hold people accountable from taking our girls from the outside and shipping us off to wherever in Europe to serve as sex slaves or whatever. And I think if that happens and we start remembering our humanity, then we'll hold people accountable for what they've done to our communities. Because I, I see, I see women in my community who have lost sisters, who have lost cousins, who have lost daughters, mm -hmm. and they are hurting. And I think people just completely disconnect our humanity from our bodies. And that's, that's the most disturbing thing to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of colonization and racism in Latin American countries in Colombia, for example, um, the sexuality, it's like indigenous groups are almost, they are like polyamorous in some senses, mm -hmm. that they are, there are multiple partners. And in the Amazon, there are communities that have more, and this has changed because of globalization, colonization, but previously in the Amazon, <clears throat> Amazon Basin, which comp is comprised of Colombia, Brazil, and Peru, indigenous communities, a woman, if she got pregnant with a man, and she got pregnant with one male, even though she, that man got her pregnant, and she, you know, she can have multiple other partners and like the other partners that she has during the times that she's pregnant and even like can be before all of those men that she had sex with, they will respond for the child and help to raise the child. And they will help because it's a community effort and community effort as in how, as in if a child is crying in an indigenous community, if a child is running around and you know causing havoc or whatever, the community members will respond to it. The all the other people, the other women, the other men will help with that child, and it's seen as a village effort. It takes a village to raise a child, right? So that that perspective is that it is a community effort to have each person integrated into the culture, because it's a culture now. Because with that child having multiple parents, basically multiple men um, responding for him and multiple women helping in the community, then that child has more of an identity of their culture because they're not as isolated as Western families that it's a nucleus, right? Um, having said that and going towards like the colonization aspect is that through colonization that was deemed as some kind of like savagery and some kind of like wildness you know like inability to have a society like a conforming society like inability to have like any kind of record of who like the real parent is you know but it, it's that's ignorant because it really requires a lot of human interaction for humans to be truly happy because we are social, we are social creatures. And so that form of control really dampened cultures. It really like put, it put pressure on the culture. And even though like we still have all of these wonderful cultural things in Colombia and all of these like different um, art and music and from ethnic groups in Colombia, you can still see that that has an effect on how they relate to other indigenous peoples. Um, indigenous peoples in Colombia, there's many groups. Um, historically, it was more Maysac. Um, now you'll see Guambianos and Kogis, and you'll see a lot of different like bias, like my grandfather's bias. Um, but you like, there's still a lot of of segregation in that. And unfortunately, through that segregation and through that control, um, a lot of sexual like sexual abuse has been committed against indigenous women in the communities throughout Colombia. Like they are forced as children into into being prostitutes, ch child prostitutes. They are forced into being um, 
used and like used in families and like they are they're like basically like a slave where they have to cook and clean for the family and they can be like 12 years old or 10 years old so um the community colombian community of indigenous people has gone through a lot of terrorization through colonization um and there's because of that a lot of sexual violence um that is affecting even like young generations like as of now um and it's difficult through all that to try and s express yourself sexually i think it's difficult um also the education level is different um i've been to many different places in colombia that are more in the mountains that are more remote and the highest educated person that i met was like fifth grade level so that is also a form of control and like if you are if you have no education as a woman if you have no way to get out and the only way that you're going to get land or that you're going to get anywhere is being with a man you know you're going to be with a man. doesn't matter if you are of other sexual preference or whatever or what you want to do so you will have to depend on a man and what happens when you depend on a man he expects you to do things for him and he, you know he could be you could be 14 years old as a young woman and you want to get an education want to get out there but that doesn't matter because you have to marry this 40 year old man you know so that that that's a that's a horrible form of control where you see in colombia a vast majority a very large amount of young women from ages 12 to 16 that are pregnant that have had one or two kids and so if you have children and you are that young and you still don't know the world and how you experience sexuality, right? And you see that a lot in indigenous communities. And that's actually a project that me and my mother are working on. We're doing um, women's conservation and we work with the communities and we try to like find a way to give um, financial independence to these women so they don't have to depend on men. Because unfortunately, that's what, it, that's what it's like. And, and, and I'm going to jump in because I've listened to both of you all and what you're what I'm hearing is that basically colonialism broke down the infrastructures of family and along with that community and along with that the sexuality of yes. female and along with that culture. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so so because when you break down a culture the goal is to you that when you break down a culture something has to fill in those holes in those gaps and colonialism along with you know the creation of racism it imposed their way of thinking and their thoughts and you know the reality of it is that european society is a patriarchal society oh Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's extremely patriarchal. And so, yes, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, but yeah, it what it did was it their patriarchal thinking, unfortunately, it either erased way of thought and concept about the way that young females, young males, the feminine energy was supposed to be respected and supposed to be treated. And so now, not only are we as melanated feminine energy trying to reclaim what was taken from us, but at the same time, our men are lost too. And so we have a society of sexual brokenness and damage. And we're still living under an umbrella of sexual repression. Yeah. And there, and here's the, another thing. One group can display a certain type of sexuality and it be okay. And even though it still fits in a box, they're still okay. And it's still upheld to a certain level versus when you start looking at melanated communities, it's not the same. You know, it, it's not the same. Um, it's demonized. Melanated sexuality is demonized. It is ghetto. It is feisty. It is Pocahontas. -y. 
you know, and so that is the message that I got from you all as I heard you all talking, and I thought that that was like extremely um, deep because I don't think a lot of people in our nation really understand that. I don't think they really understand or no, they, I don't think they can see the disconnect between colonialism and racism and how it ties into how melanated women are viewed and how they are treated, how they were treated medically, how they were treated domestically, socially, and let's not even talk about politically. Mm -hmm. so we just had to fight now to get to where we are politically. And so I just, I just wanted to throw that out there to you ladies because I thought what you all said was extremely powerful. Um, I know we probably have a few more minutes and we're gonna wanna close on off because we will be coming back to the physical again. And so is there anything that you all would like to add on? Like, do you wanna address the conversation that needs to be held between us with our men about how our men need to kind of start to step up in regards to recognizing the impact that colonialism and racism has had on our interactions with one another. Power to the people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Power to the people. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all finish that. <laughs> what you got? What you got? Um, yeah, I would like to say, like, we have to work with, with people who, unfortunately, are unlike us like we have to we have to work within the community but we also have to we have to find allies in in the white community we gotta we gotta tell them how it really is because like some cases you're really preaching to the choir because they're your friend like they know the problem is like there's still so many people out there and we need allies we need people that are going to back us up and we got to strengthen our community and become more aware and have people around us, artists that are interested in these topics, that want to highlight the struggles that there are presented in communities that have like all of these different like aspects, like mestizos, mulatos, people in str like strictly indigenous, African-American, Afro-Colombian, mm -hmm. whatever you have, right? So. Mm -hmm. We, we really need to step up. And the thing is, like, if people are going to sexualize us so much, you know, like, well, at least respect us. Mm -hmm. At least respect us. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. You're right. <laughs> like, if you're going to sexualize us, at least respect the sexuality that you're sexualizing. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you can enjoy it, but I, I can't enjoy it myself for myself. Right. Mm, that's good. I didn't even think of that. Ooh, I didn't, that's why I like the young folk. You think outside the box. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never thought about that. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, you know that is really deep because even sometimes we don't even know we don't even know how to enjoy our sexuality. Nope. Yeah, you know we don't know how to enjoy our sexuality. We don't know when we see ourselves on the big screen sometimes even i think even we've been put into a box of questioning whether or not we should like should we approve of that or should we not approve of that yep. Yep. you know I, I think that's because even i i was watching um well i i kind of came through the towards like the middle end of the movie um do you guys remember the movie of um, the best man with uh tay diggs and uh, Morris Chestnut and stuff. And I remember there's this part where they're at the bachelor parter, I mean, parter, pa party. And Candy comes in, you know, and they're playing, you know, just, you know, remember that song? It's like Candy. But anyway, and so I know y'all might not because that's an old song. But, you know, like she comes in and she's dancing, you know, and there's strippers of a part at, at the party. And I remember. Mm -hmm. I was in college, I want to say, or maybe about to come out of college when that movie came out. I don't know how old I was. No, I wasn't in college anymore. Maybe I was out. The whole point was, is I was in my 20s. And I remember when we, I saw that, I was watching that movie with other melanated people in the, um, you know, we were all watching it together in the place that we were in. And of course, there were some of us 
that were like, oh man, yeah, yeah. Of course, all the men, you know, were like, yeah, you know. But there yeah. were some people that were advocating for the strippers, you know. And then I'm gonna be honest, for me, I wasn't advocating for it, but at the same time, that sexual repressive part of me and of how I was raised, especially being Southern African American, you know, was like, you know, I recognize that they, you know, the women, they have beautiful bodies, they have beautiful bodies, you know, but at the same time, it was how it was being displayed for the pleasure of these men. Yeah. You know, and for me, it was like, ah, she didn't come, you know, she ain't at a bachelorette party or it ain't even that. She's not at a party that's mixed where you got men and women in there and there's appreciation of culture and body and celebration. For me, it was the sexualization of three beautiful African-American women for the pleasure of these men. And then for me, it was, and this movie's being made by a black man. Mm. And so how is that being viewed? You know, how is what's happening being reinforced in my own community versus other people outside of the community who are also watching this movie? And what is it they're thinking? Because a lot of times, we you know, as people of color, when we put things out about our, ourselves, if it is a stereotype, we are reinforcing that stereotype for those who are non-melanated. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to the sexualization of melanated female bodies. Mm -hmm. And so... For me, I want to say maybe that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you all to see what you all thought about things like that. Because a lot of our sexualization tends to be displayed in magazines, in songs, in movies, even in artwork, you know, and, 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 and in articles and readings. And it's viewed differently when it's given by the colonizers versus when it's given mm -hmm. by us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even, um, go ahead. I just want to jump in on that because I, that's the, that's the, that's what I'm trying to walk between right now because, you know, in a lot of traditional, a lot of traditional garb in indigenous societies, you know, women would have their breasts out or, mm -hmm. you know, it was, okay to, it was okay to show your body, you know, mm -hmm. it was, your, the female yes. body is a beautiful thing. But at the same time, it's like, like you said, like, who's it? I, I guess the issue with the movie you were just discussing is like, well, who, who am I displaying it for? When in reality, it makes me wonder if, you know, the sexualization is more so from how men started to view it and them taking it out of context. Because, you know, I, I want, personally, I want to love my body. I love my body. I want to love my body. But at the same time, I feel like I can't show it because it will be sexualized. So I'm trying to tell between what's right and what's wrong on that based on what society has put forth for us. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, and go ahead. You get the oh. last note, the last one. Yes. <laughs> well, um, well, we were like touching on like sex, like sex work, basically. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other conversation. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like I, I really, I really see the power in femininity, um, and also like transgender, like um, imagery representation. Like we need more. We need to be more open to that. Also, like I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of people want to like look at women, but then like when they're like, oh, you know, I would never date that woman, or like, oh, like oh, is that actually a woman or is that a man? Like, oh, you know, like that's, people People don't want to scratch too deep. They want to be on the surface of things. Um, and sex work, I feel like um, sex work is something that is a spectrum of different like situation, like situational things. And I feel like sex work is, is work. I feel like all sex workers go to heaven. I feel like there's a lot of power in that. I feel like there's, people who do it for many different reasons, and that's them. But I feel like there's a lot of people of color in sex work, um, which comes down right back to the fetishization of women of color. Um, but uh, no, that's a whole other conversation, yeah. but I have to go. Um, yeah. 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 Because my room yes. has been reserved for like okay. an hour, and people are like keep like coming in, like trying to push okay. me out. <laughs> All right. But um, I would just like to thank you so much for this platform to be heard. 
um, to have a little bit of like space and to like speak to another sister and like have this con like connectivity um, and to really be able to have this opportunity to hear um, other people of color, other women of color's perspectives. Mm -hmm. No, thank you all. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead. Oh, yes, thank you both for being on here. I appreciate it. We're going to continue this conversation next week with the gentlemen. And then following that, we're going to come back together as a group. And I really hope that you ladies will come back on um, you know, and utilize this platform because I think this is a very important discussion. And you're right, we need to have a discussion about the sex workers and colonialism because that began in 1492 when yeah. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And so, yes, I'm gonna say goodbye to you ladies. Thank you very, very much for being here. This was lovely. Oh my gosh, you guys don't understand. My heart is going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom. And so Amina and Isabel, is it Isabel or Isabella? Isabella. Okay, Isabella. Gracias. Thank De you no so way. much to my indigenous sisters. Thank you very much. And you all have a very great and humble Sunday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.